reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the girdle of his waist and faithfulness the girdle of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall feed. Their young one shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The suckling child shall play over the hole of the asp and the wean child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the word of the Lord.
a reading from a sermon by Pope St. Leo the Great. This is the day our Savior was born. What a joy for us, my beloved. This is no season for sadness. This, the birthday of life, the life which annihilates the fear of death and engenders joy, promising, as it does, immortality. Nobody is an outsider to this happiness. The same cause for joy is common to all, for as our Lord found nobody free from guilt when he came to bring an end to death and sin, so he came with redemption for all. Let the saint rejoice, for he hastens to his crown. Let the sinner be filled with joy, for pardon is offered him. Let the Gentile be emboldened, for he is called to life. When the designated time had come, which God, in his deep and impenetrable plan, had fixed upon, God's Son took the nature of man upon himself in order to reconcile man to his Creator. Thus would the devil the father of death, be himself overcome by that self-same human nature which he had overcome. The angels therefore exult at the birth of the Lord. They sing, Glory to God in high heaven. They announce, Peace on earth for men on whom his favor rests. For they behold the heavenly Jerusalem, being constructed from out of the peoples on earth. How greatly ought mere men rejoice at this mysterious undertaking of divine love when the angels on high thrill so much at it. My beloved, let us offer thanksgiving to God the Father through his Son in the Holy Spirit in the great mercy with which he loved us, he had pity on us. And in giving life to Christ, gave life to us too, when we were dead through sin, so that in him we might be a new creation, a new work of his hands. Let us be quit of the old self, and the habits that went with it. Share us now in the birth of Christ. Let us break with the deeds of the flesh. O Christian, be aware of your nobility. It is God's own nature that you share. Do not then, by an ignoble life, fall back into your former baseness. Think of the head, think of the body of which you are a member. Recall that you have been rescued from the power of darkness and have been transferred to the light of God, the kingdom of God. Through the sacrament of baptism, you have been made a temple of the Holy Spirit. Do not, by evil deeds, Drive so great an indweller away from you, submitting yourself once more to the slavery of the devil. For you were bought at the price of Christ's blood.
Let us pray that God our Father will bless this crib and that all who worship his Son, born of the Virgin Mary, may come to share his life in glory. God our Father, on this night, your Son, Jesus Christ, was born of the Virgin Mary for us men and for our salvation. Bless this crib which we have prepared to celebrate that holy birth. May all who see it be strengthened in faith and receive the fullness of life he came to bring, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Octavo calendas januari, luna etiam plena, in numeris transactis seculis a creatione mundi, quando in principio Deus creavit celum et terram, et hominem formavit ad imaginem suam. Per multis etium seculis ex quo post diluvium, altissimus in nubibus arcum possu erat, signum federis et pacis. A migrazione abre, patris nostri in fide, deur caldeorum, seculo vigesimo primo. Ab egressu populi Israel de Egipto, Moïse seduce, seculo decimo tertio. Ab unzioni David in regem, anno circi termilesimo. Ab dome da sexagesima quinta, iuxta Danielis profetiam. Olimpiade centesima nonagesima quarta, ab urbe condita, anno septingentesimo quinquagesimo secundo, anno imperi Cesaris Octaviani Augusti, quadragesimo secundo, toto orbe in pace composito, Jesus Christus, eternus Deus, eternique patris filius, mundum volens adventus suo piissimo consecrare, de Spirito Santo conceptus, novemque post conceptionem de cursis mensibus. In Bethlehem, Iuda, nascitur ex Maria Virgine factus homo, Nativitas Domini Nostri Jesu Christi, Secundum Carnem. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
let us pray. Father, you make this holy night radiant with the splendor of Jesus Christ our light. We welcome him as Lord, the true light of the world. Bring us to eternal joy in the kingdom of heaven, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. God's grace has been revealed, and it has made salvation possible for the whole human race and taught us that what we have to do is to give up everything that does not lead to God and all our worldly ambitions. We must be self-restrained and live good and religious lives here in this present world while we are waiting in hope for the blessing which will come with the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. He sacrificed himself for us in order to set us free from all wickedness and to purify a people so that it could be his very own and would have no ambition except to do good. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke. Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census of the whole world 
to be taken. This census, the first, took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and traveled up to Judea to the town of David called Bethlehem since he was of David's house and line in order to be registered together with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. In the countryside close by, there were shepherds who lived in their fields and took it in turns to watch their flocks during the night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone round them. They were terrified, but the angel said, Do not be afraid. Listen, I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord, and here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, with the angels, there was a great throng of the heavenly host praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace to men who enjoy his favor. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, my dear friends, God's messengers are not always given a great welcome. Those shepherds who lived in the fields near Bethlehem and took it in turns to watch their flocks during the night suddenly saw the angel of the Lord and the glory of the Lord shone round them and they were terrified. If, like me, you've been in recent days to watch a school play about the birth of Jesus. The angel of the Lord was more than lightly dressed up like some dainty creature out of Peter Pan or a Renaissance painting. There's nothing frightening there. But Luke's Gospel does not describe the angel's appearance. All we know is that one of God's messengers appeared to some shepherds and scared them. So much so that the messenger had to reassure them that they had no reason to be afraid. The angel, God's messenger, had some news. News of great joy. And what is more, the joy was to be shared by the whole people. These last words are hugely significant because God chose to reveal his tidings of comfort and joy, not only to the privileged and educated sages, who were on their way from distant countries to come and worship the king, not only to holy men and women like Simeon and Anna, Joseph and Mary, but to the whole people. Nobody was excluded. Everyone ought to benefit from this news. So the event we call Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ, is evidently meant for everyone. But there is more to it than that. Deep within our religion, there has always been a strong belief that the birth of this baby had an effect not on, only on humanity, but on everything God ever created. The psalm that is traditionally used at Christmas Mass is an appeal to the whole of creation to recognize the Lord of creation. 
Sing to the Lord, all the earth. We heard. And then there are these powerful words in the third verse. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Let the sea and all within it thunder praise. Let the land and all it bears rejoice. All the trees of the wood shout for joy at the presence of the Lord, for he comes. He comes to rule the earth. Twelve centuries later, St. Francis of Assisi arranged with a friend in a village in central Italy to stage the first live crib. And it was Francis who gave pride of place to the ox and the ass, convinced that if such animals had been there in the stage,